G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, sad day afternoon here in Australia right now. We've definitely had a pullback. We got up to, you know, close to that 57 and a half sort of thousand dollar mark, nearly 58,000, and we've pulled back. But the pullback hasn't been too bad so far. But there's definitely been a retracement. We can see that over here. All right, we were at about $1.78 trillion. So we're back down around that $1.75 trillion mark. So we've lost a couple of hundred billion there, but it hasn't been anything drastic, but it's definitely been a pullback. BTC dominance, people are getting a little bit more bullish on BTC at the moment. So back up above that 60% range. ETH dominance down to 11.5%, so it is dropping but ETH gas prices are rising. So I get the feeling like at the moment, people are likely cashing out profits from some of their altcoins and starting to move back into Bitcoin. That's what I think is happening at the moment. We'll have to wait and see. I just get the feeling like people think Bitcoin's about to make another move and they're gonna take their profits from their altcoins, put them into, well, generally they would have gone into probably stable coins for a little while and now they're gonna put them into Bitcoin. But time will tell, we'll wait and see. All right, so it looks like a bit of a mixed bag here, really. We've got some green here, some red there. So what's really moved in the last 24 hours? Is anything still pumping? Chili's, it is still pumping. It is on such an absolute tear at the moment. What's killing me is I remember hearing the stories about this only a few weeks ago. And I was like, it wasn't even a few weeks ago. It was probably literally only a week or two ago. And I was like, I should probably get some of that. And I could have 6x my money, whatever I put in. But, you know, what can you do? You, you don't, you, no one can tell the future and exactly what's coming, but it would have been nice. All right, Harmony doing well, Decentraland doing well, Flow, Terra, Hedera, Hashgraph, they've been doing quite well as well. Sushi, Pundix, Filecoin. So there's definitely coins that are moving. Nothing too crazy at the moment. For me, really, I think anything under 15%. Don't get me wrong, any gain is still a gain. I'm happy with it. But under 15% is nothing too spectacular for cryptos. Anything 15% or above, and we're talking 24 hours here, not like a week or a month or anything. Anything above 15% 24 hours is generally pretty good. And particularly, I mean, if you're getting up near 100% in 24 hours, that is absolutely amazing. So some coins are doing all right, but I'd say, what do we got here? One, two, three, four. So only four coins in the top 100 that have plus 15% gains. So all the rest are going to be below that. Still all right, but again, nothing too crazy. What about losses though? Top 100, what's, you know, well not what's, has anything really dumped? All right, yep. NEM, that is coming down so fast. I, I really don't know what's going on there. I haven't seen too much news and I can only guess it's just a simple pullback, but that is quite drastic, 50% in seven days, 37% in the last 24 hours, so something going on there. Solana, we do have a little bit of news about Solana. They've had a bit of a pullback, pulled back 12.5%, but still up 12.1% for the last seven days. So a bit of sort of ranging going on in Solana there. This was always going to happen, so Matic looks like it's found its peak. Now it's going to retrace some, but look, 100% in seven days. Uh, nothing to cry about that and I got into Polygon ages ago I'm up way more than 100% so I'm really happy with that Polygon is one of my better performers now not quite the best I've still got a few that have outperformed it uh, and again you know I'm kicking myself because I didn't put in more but that's just the way it goes I went you know majority with the safer options things like Ethereum and Bitcoin and then all the other sort of altcoins that I get into I really didn't have more than maybe one to two percent max into these altcoins now those positions have obviously grown and some of my altcoin positions are worth a lot more than one to two percent but that's simply because they've gone up so much it's not because i've really continued to add to them so much although with a couple i have i've added to Aave a little bit and i've definitely added to synthetics a reasonable amount but polygon i think i've I originally bought once and then yeah i think i've only added to it maybe one other time and again, it's performing quite well. So we'll just have to wait and see. All right, Phantom, same thing. It had a really good pump, and so obviously it's going to have a retracement. This is the seven days. It's not showing how it performed for like the month or two before that. And look, again, if it's under 15%, it's, it's not too bad. Anything over 15% loss in 24 hours is definitely going to hurt a little bit. So again, NEM. But really, these other ones... 
not so much and again if you've lost 8.6 percent and this is crypto.com coin but you're still up 20 percent over the seven days that's not so bad so a bit of a mixed bag there but kind of the same the top four so one two three four in both the losses and the gains were reasonable uh, gains and sort of reasonable losses but everything else uh, it's not too bad so a bit of a sideways market at the moment the market is still indecisive and really we're waiting to see whether it makes us mind up to you know push to those next high levels or do we have to correct some and go down now the graph obviously having quite a pullback there but again they did pump quite substantially for around about a month there so a dollar 71 now i think it got up to around the two dollar mark i can probably expect to see it back down around the dollar fifty dollar thirty mark we'll have to wait and see all right let's move on have a look at the bitcoin chart so as i said maybe this market rolls over and it did roll over right here it wasn't a big rollover and again it's a bit of a spinning top candle with a really big wick to the bottom side and then we move over to today's candle and again not much is happening this is a really indecisive candle the, the market just isn't sure what it wants to do now sometimes indecisive can be to the upside but what i find is a lot of the time indecisive can lead to the downside as well but i guess that depends on whether you're in a bull market or a bear market but we can see indecision here rolled over but we can see indecision here pumped up but then rolled over indecision here pumped up a little bit but then really rolled over but it goes the other way as well like you have a bit of indecision here pump uh, rolled over then pump straight back up so it's kind of topsy-turvy and all over the place and like this is a perfect example this is complete indecision just almost nothing happened on this day pumped up the next day but then rolled over fake out and rolled over again so for me the market is just this could be a bearish trend you know again if we can't really get up above this old previous all-time high and we did but only just and really there's about where it was so we got up to it and only just but it was a bit of a fake out 57,484 compared to I think this was about 57,500 maybe 80 or something like that but we've retested that old all-time high and then we've pushed over but it hasn't been a heavy sell-off it really hasn't and there is a bit of volume here it was growing but then it sold off I think a lot of that is just simply new money who got in a little while ago maybe back here uh, and have made some good gains and they're simply selling to get some of their money back because they're unsure I think long-term holders are generally just holding at the moment and we'll have a look at some of the stories there is some more bullish news so let's go to the first story micro strategy good lord they're still buying Bitcoin and that goes to show the big businesses out there they're not too phased by these prices and you know the market having sort of slowed down this is when they want to get in they don't want to buy into a massive pump don't get me wrong bitcoin has already you know pumped a lot but they don't want to buy into it when it's kind of going parabolic they want it to have slowed down and sort of leveled off a bit and that's what it's doing at the moment so on march the 12th that's yesterday uh, the publicly listed firm MicroStrategy announced the company purchased an additional 262 Bitcoin for $15 million in cash. The company CEO Michael Saylor announced the acquisition of the coins during the morning hours on Friday Eastern Standard Time to his 623,000 Twitter, Twitter followers. So I really do think that MicroStrategy, they're going for the cool 100,000 Bitcoins and I don't think there's going to be too much that's going to stop them from trying to purchase those other than maybe the price, price sorry, not price, really starts to skyrocket. That, make, that might make me, that might make them think, sorry, all right, maybe we've missed, you know, the 100,000 Bitcoins for this run and we'll simply try and buy some more, you know, after the next bear market. You know, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It just might be a considering factor. I'm not sure that they're going to be want to be. They're going to want to be buying Bitcoin at maybe a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I think it's around this fifty thousand dollar mark that they're probably pretty happy. But when they're buying Bitcoin now, I think I read something that with all the Bitcoin they've bought, ninety one thousand. And I don't know if it's here. Or I read it somewhere else. Yeah. So they've still got an average price of twenty four thousand dollars per Bitcoin. So they're still, you know, they've doubled their money, even though they're buying more Bitcoin now at a much more expensive price. Their average buy-in is $24,000 per Bitcoin. 
and that is it's a little bit more than double the price actually all right moving on the coinbase effect so the explosive rally from scale and polygon proves that the coinbase effect continues to be a potent a potent price mover for small and large cap altcoins yep anything that basically gets listed on coinbase it does have that coinbase effect and pumps quite hard so scale has been the biggest beneficiary of the beneficiary of the coinbase effect increasing more than 200 percent since the announcement on march 9th while matic has grown 88 percent and it is starting to have that pullback now it had a big pump before that as well and sushi has gained a modest seven percent but look sushi pumped a lot before the whole coinbase thing so if something's pumped really hard before an announcement on coinbase it's probably only going to get a minor pump with that coinbase news but if it hasn't really done too much prior to the announcement of it coming on coinbase then it might get the really good pump but generally this is still standing true you know that buy the rumor sell the news if there's a bit of a rumor something might get added to coinbase not financial advice but it might not be a bad idea to sort of you know get a bit of a position in those coins now they don't always happen but it makes other people kind of buy that rumor as well and then as the news happens whether it be hopefully it's something positive like it has been announced on coinbase then you go ahead and sell and particularly if it says not getting added to coinbase then you want to make sure you sell as well and it doesn't dump uh the price a whole lot but that doesn't always happen you know projects can still do well without getting on coinbase but the coinbase effect is still real and still legit and these numbers basically prove that all right could there be a 51 percent attack in ethereum very very interesting i know a lot of the miners are really unhappy with eip 1559 i think it is yeah eip 1559 yep they're going to lose a lot of money in, so it's revenue basically money money revenue it's all the same thing for them when the gas fee prices are adjusted and they can't you know tax the amount that they are at the moment basically having these prices so high it's going to uniform the prices and so here it says a vocal group of participants have since begun to advocate for a dis a, sorry a demonstrative network takeover which could threaten the security of the network now this is concerning for ethereum i don't think they're going to do it because they would just wreck it and then they will have no money but I do think, yeah, they could have a little bit of a protest, but they won't do a 51% attack on the network because it'll really pretty much kill Ethereum right then and there. And then, you know, rather than get less of the gas fees than what they're getting, there just will be no gas fees. So I don't think they're going to do that. Because it says here, the group, however, does not seemingly intend to overthrow Ethereum, insisting that they only desire to show the viability of such an attack. The goal of this document is to describe a mechanism by which a merger can happen quickly with little modification to either the ETH power or Beacon clients, said Buterian. This move would easily transition the network to Ethereum 2.0 faster than expected. And this is probably what he's going to have to do because it says up here, Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin is working to proactively solve a blockchain vulnerability. And that is kind of a 51% attack. If enough miners got together, they absolutely could. It's the same with Bitcoin if they got enough miners together to do it. But the whole question is, why would they do it? They would kill whatever, you know, network, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or something else. If they did a 51% attack, people just won't trust that anymore. They're going to go away from it. Then it really isn't all that decentralized, and they lose whatever money they're sort of making. So I don't think that's going to happen. But it is concerning that they're even sort of talking about it. But look, to the ETH miners, they're making an absolute mozza right now. Enjoy it while you can. But in the end, this has to be a system that's fair and everyone can afford to use, or Ethereum just can't grow and scale. There's going to be other things that you can mine. It doesn't have to be all about Ethereum or all about Bitcoin. There's other coins that you can move on to. But I do understand where they're coming from. You know, if you're used to making, let's say, you know, a thousand bucks a week, and all of a sudden you find out that that thousand dollars a week is going and you're only going to make three hundred dollars a week you're probably going to do everything you can to try and keep the thousand dollars a week and from that point of view i can understand it but from the grander grand scheme of things we really do need to have you know eth 2.0 rolled out you know 
EIP 1559 and all that happened. It's unfortunate for the miners. You know, things happen and they need to keep up with the times and they knew this was coming for a while if they haven't planned for it. Well, yeah, that is really unfortunate and I do feel for them a little bit. But yeah, big picture, ETH 2.0, that is the future. We can't stay with this proof of work system. It just costs too much with those kind of gas fees. We can't do it. All right, adoption, it's still happening. More and more companies are buying Bitcoin. We just heard about MicroStrategy. Now, Rush Order Tees, a t-shirt printing and embroidering company, intends to buy $1 million worth of crypto with its cash reserves. The company has so far purchased 300,000 in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies over the past month and will ramp to 1 million in crypto holdings by the end of April. So that's very, very nice. Interesting that they're actually going into other cryptos though as well. Generally, we've you know, heard a lot about companies going into Bitcoin, a little bit about Ethereum, but they said other cryptocurrencies, so there might be more. You know, Could it be Litecoin? Could it be Bitcoin Cash? Could it be who knows what? Very, very interesting, and I'll be interested to see exactly what they got into. You know, Chances are it's probably Bitcoin and Ethereum, but again, maybe there's some Polkadot, Cardano, or something else in there. And you know, where did they buy it? How have they bought it? Was it through Coinbase? Was it through Grayscale? Yeah, again, the adoption, it's happening. It's there in front of us, but it's not everyone who's gonna pile into it like all at the same time. It will be kind of dribs and drabs here and there at first, and then it will slowly start to build up speed, and then it really will be a flood. And that's that whole FOMO stage, that last, sort of part of it where everyone is clamming to try and get in because the gains are just so unbelievable and when that happens that's and it's hard because I've been there before I was there in the later stage of the 2017 run and I just thought this is never going to stop and unfortunately I didn't sell a thing fortunately now I didn't sell a thing at all so I watched my cryptos go right up I watched them go right down and I simply held them. I did convert some of the random altcoins back into Bitcoin. But basically the $800, and I've told this story before, that I put in in late 2017, watched it turn to 4,200, 4,400, then watched it very quickly turn into about 330 bucks. And that is now back up around sort of $3,000. So I've still 10X'd my, well, 10X my money from the low anyway but not quite from the high. But anyway, I'm in profit. And that's the that's the thing is I just simply had to hold through the bear market and I'm up. All right. So I got into refinance a little while ago and unfortunately I bought at a position that wasn't so great. I looked at the charts and it didn't look so bad, but I was looking at the charts uh, not of the entire reef uh, kind of rollout of just a short period of time. So it looked like a good buy, but in the long run, uh, I definitely lost a bit. I'm, Finally back in the green with it, which is good. But here's the news. All right, so what is it? Alameda Research invests $20 million in refinance. The investment will reportedly allow Reef to implement more cross-chain integrations with Serum uh, and Radium on Solana. So talking about Solana before, this is the Solana news that I was talking about. So Reef is DeFi and it's part of the Polkadot chain. So after investing in travel app maps.me and decentralized finance protocol Oxygen, Alameda Research will be putting $20 million into Reef Finance, the Polkadot-based DeFi platform, platform. According to Reef Finance, Alameda Research will be purchasing $20 million worth of the firm's native tokens, Reef, roughly $528 million at the current price of about sort of three to nearly four cents. The investment will reportedly allow two comp- the two companies to collaborate on technology and strategy in the near future. The 20 million reef comes after 40 million invested in Solana-based lending platform Oxygen and 50 million in Maps.me. So Alameda Re- uh, Research, they're obviously quite heavily invested in the crypto space uh, and you know they're obviously very bullish and I'm guessing they consider themselves still an early mover. All right. So yesterday was actually one year since the since the big crash. I did not even think about that until I saw this. Bitcoin was down to around about 3,600, 3,900 or something like that. And it's basically now up 15x. So anyone who was lucky enough to buy the Bitcoin back then 
and still, you know, have those steel hands to hold, they're currently, excuse me, up 15x, so congratulations. But I mean, you know, there's so many coins that have gone up even more. ETH's up by 60%, BNB's up by 65%, so yeah congratulations to anyone who was able to buy literally near the bottom of that dip i got in around about that time but it was probably a few days later so again the cheapest bitcoin i got i think was 5400 i got a little bit there a little bit at 6000 but most of it was sort of around the 7000 to maybe even eight thousand dollar mark because i was buying a little bit after that but you know the story of my life i only wish i had to put in more that's what i keep saying about all of this that's the way it is you know if you had have known it was the bottom, like if someone had have told me that is the bottom, it's not going any lower, I absolutely would have thrown everything I had at it because I had some money then, but I was just nervous that, oh, maybe it's going to go lower and that's what you think. And then as it goes higher, then you're still a little bit unsure, like, oh, is this the bottom or is this a fake out and it's going to roll over again? So I'll put in a little bit and then I'll watch it go up and then I'm like, all right, maybe this is, I'll put in a little bit and then I see it's finally gone above some of the, the other highs and then I'm like all right yeah now's the time I need to get in so again I got a little bit at 5,400 a little bit at 6,200 and then really once I saw it around the kind of 7,400 8,600 dollar mark thereabouts that's really where I was like rightio now I'm putting my you know the money that I had in but again I still didn't put it all in that was mainly into bitcoin and ethereum and then I scaled into some altcoins after that so the altcoins that I got into, if I had have put in literally at the bottom when Bitcoin was 3,600 or 800, whatever it was, can only imagine how much better I would have been by now. But one year on and congratulations to all those people who bought and held. I'm sure most of you are doing quite well. Unfortunate if you got into a bad project that, you know, was a rug pull or something like that or literally just died. That's happened to some projects. But congratulations to anyone who's in a relatively good uh, project they've probably done extremely well if bitcoin's 15x you know any good projects that you're in has probably done nearly twice that all right crypto investor so we finally know who bought uh beeple's 5000 day uh, nft so his name is metacoven so we go down here metacoven which is the pseudonymous founder of non-fungible token fund metapurse is the proud owner of the Beeple NFT auctioned by Christie's on Thursday for 69.3 million. Now, this is what I found interesting here. Meta Coven paid for Beeple's every day, uh, every days in Christie's confirmed. Uh, that was a little bit weird, but it beat out Justin uh, Tron founder Justin Sun in a last minute bid. So Justin Sun has been getting heavy into uh, a number of uh, NFTs and other things like that. And he's obviously doing quite well if he had 60 something, you know, million dollars to, you know, go after this NFT. What is going to be interesting now is can it hold its value? I've got no doubt over the really long term, it'll probably get back to this price. It's just in the short term. I, I, I just feel like there's a bit of an NFT kind of bubble at the moment. But, you know, again, I don't know enough about art. That's why I haven't really got into NFTs at all. I've got into the platforms that actually... Uh, have them on them so again ethereum really i've got ethereum and again i've told this before things like engine and that but justin tron he was justin tron sorry justin's son uh he really went all out uh, and still couldn't get it so congratulations to uh meta coven i get the feeling that might be chamath or mark cuban but we'll have to wait and see all right bit of fud here so bitcoin not a long-term allocation says man group ceo Really? <laughs> All right. Luke Ellis, CEO of UK hedge fund Man Group, sees Bitcoin as a trading instrument rather than a long term asset allocation. All right. Let's break this down. If he's like a day trader, fair enough. I, I agree. You don't have to hold Bitcoin long term, it's, it's not a must. But the people who have made the most money from Bitcoin are the ones that hold they absolutely smash the traders most traders but you know lose money that's just the way it is and even the best of them still generally don't pe don't beat people who simply invest in a good product and hold 
So I find that interesting. I can only assume that uh, this gentleman and his company, and I mean they're a hedge fund, so they must be pretty good, uh, do quite well at trading. Because look, if you can pick the tops and pick the bottoms and the, you know, and the peaks and the lows and all the rest of it, trading Bitcoin, you know, could be if you were that good and you could really pick the tops and bottoms. Yes, you could outperform, you know, investors, but. No one really knows of anyone doing that. The people who've done the best simply buy when everyone else is selling and sell when, el- sell when everyone else is buying. And they're the people that make the most money. But again, they're not doing it, you know, like so much on a daily basis. They are really sort of buying and holding for the long term. But that's not to say that there's not a trader out there that's, you know, completely outperformed the markets, uh, but they're just not that well known. Again, you know, Warren Buffett, he wasn't really a trader. He just simply did the research, bought and held really. It's not that he never sold anything ever, but generally he just simply held. And if it was, you know, a good company doing well, he'd, you know, have the cash sitting on the side and wait for those big moments. But in saying that, he had a fair bit of uh, cash sitting on the side a while ago, uh, waiting to buy when things were going to go, when he thought things were going to go lower and they didn't go lower. So, even you know the best you know of the best of all time warren buffett he can't pick it so all right last but not least etfs they are all the rage at the moment and i did speak about this one a little while ago and i really like the idea of this a proposed exchange traded fund would invest the majority of its capital into companies that have bitcoin on their balance sheets or are otherwise connected to the cryptocurrency. So there was one, I forget whether it was Van Eck or someone else, and they were going to have an ETF that was based around like all the kind of exchanges and that, all the businesses within cryptocurrencies. And now this one is going to be all the businesses that have invested in cryptocurrencies. So again, things like Tesla, MicroStrategy and all that. These are the kind of stocks that I would be very, very interested in. Because again, I believe crypto is the future. So... Valkyrie Digital Assets, which has also filed a Bitcoin ETF application, filed a form uh, for Valkyrie Innovative Balance Sheet ETF for the US Securities and Exchange Commission on Friday in partnership with KKM Financial, which is acting as the investment advisor to the fund, and the Institutional Asset Manager, SEI, which is acting as the distributor of the fund. The fund will invest principally in the securities of operating companies that have inactive balance sheets. Oh, sorry, innovative balance sheets, not inactive. I apologize. Uh, Operating companies that directly or indirectly invest in, transact in, or otherwise have exposure to Bitcoin or operate in the Bitcoin ecosystem. So this is what I like. The only thing I'm unsure about is do these have you know, will they fluctuate greatly with the price of cryptocurrencies and that? Like, you know, can you buy now and then do they still make money and go up during bear markets or do they tank really, really hard during bear markets? Because they're so new, no one really knows how these are going to work. I mean, you know, cryptocurrency exchanges and that, they make money whether the market goes up, they just make more when it goes up and they make less when it goes down. But they're always making money Will these ETFs still make money when the prices of cryptocurrencies are going down? I'm, I'm just not too sure. And for me, that makes me think that the best time to buy these ETFs would be at the bottom of the bear market. But then how do these ETFs perform against uh, the actual cryptocurrencies themselves? Now, my last thought on this is that because they're businesses and they just have cryptocurrencies in their sort of portfolio, they should still always make money. So I do think uh, in a bear market, these ETF prices will go down, but I don't think they'll tank as hard because these are still legitimate businesses that should still make money outside of secure uh, cryptocurrencies. They're not necessarily companies involved in cryptocurrency. They just have cryptocurrency as part of their balance sheet. So again, you know, let's say Apple and Facebook invested in cryptocurrencies. They would still be... Good, uh, good stocks to hold on to even in a crypto bear market because while yes that you know portion of cryptocurrencies they have is losing some money the rest of their businesses is still probably making really great money 
Again, there's a few questions there and things that I need to work out. I'm not exactly sure, but I'd love to know down below your thoughts. Do you think these are the kind of ETFs, if you're not into stocks at all, are these the kind that you would get into? And how do you think they would perform when a bear market comes? Do you think they're gonna tank really, really hard? Or because, particularly this one, because they're an actual business that makes money outside of cryptocurrency, they just have the crypto uh, as part of their portfolio, do you think their ETFs will still perform well? Yeah, I'm really unsure at the moment and I need to do some more research and have a bit of a better think, but yeah, it's a possibility they tank really hard, but it's I think it's more likely they only sort of come down a little bit because they're still legit businesses. Again, I'm just unsure. Let me know your thoughts down below. All right, I won't take up any more of your time. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. I'll see you next time.